Hello. Tonight we're filming in my kitchen again, just behind me, but in the darkness with a little bright light on us. But the reason is that we want to be able to show how to make shadow puppets in a, in a special box theater. So the first thing you'll need is a shoe box, the base of a shoe box. And in this box, we are going to produce a play uh, based on Paris Cat, my, my book Paris Cat, which was illustrated by Pete Krobler. So you get your shoe box and then you cut out the base of it, leaving a little room so that you can paste on a screen. And the screen is made out of baking paper, just, just like that, any sort of baking paper, because it's quite transparent. And what you would do is you would lay it over your box like that, turn the box around, and trace an outline of the square, and then put some glue on your frame and paste the screen across so that you end up with a box like that and this is then your theatre. A shoe box with a piece of baking paper pasted all the way around and then you'll need a whole lot of other bits and pieces. Some glue stick, um, some pieces of cardboard to make your shadow puppets, some tape perhaps uh, or sticky tape and sometimes it helps if you need to make little holes in cardboard, it helps to have a piece of sponge so that you can press or point your pen through the cardboard into the, when you're pressing down like that. And it doesn't make a hole on the table and it helps you not slip around. So different colors and thicknesses of card. Actually, the color of the card doesn't matter because you're just going to see a shadow. So the card gives a blank, dark shadow against the screen. So we're here we have card and um, uh, I've also got an orange bag because you can do interesting things with shadow if you work with things that are um, half like netting or transparent. A good idea too is to use some colored cellophane paper because that helps you make different colors on your screen. And in fact, here, I've actually made an entire screen of pink. So it hangs down with a weight. There's a piece of, a strip of cardboard there and a strip of cardboard at the bottom. And while I'm doing my show, I can just put it across there to get a pink effect. You could do that with blue to get a midnight effect or with green if you wanted to do a forest effect. I'm afraid the shop down the road here didn't have much cellophane, so I only could choose purple or pink. So this pink maybe could give us a bit of a sunset effect. So you have card at the top and card at the bottom, just a strip to help you weight it. So while you're doing your show, it hangs there and you've got your hands free. And then you start making your puppets out of your out of the different pieces of cardboard. Now I'm just going to put that aside. Um, what I've done is I've actually made a frame for my uh, theatre, and the frame has come from actually from the Paris Cat book. And Tiny Owl have printed activity packs, and you can actually print out the theatre itself with the curtains and the people sitting there and I've just put that on the back of a cereal card this one too you can see it's it's all brown or something like that then I cut it out this one needs to be cut out still and this gets stuck on the front of my theater like that we get the theater like that and we're going to stick it oops I've got it upside down haven't I we're going to stick it onto the theatre box like that and the other side will have a curtain as well and then I will probably put some extra decoration like that. This is just, if I put it up close you can see it's just a chocolate box that I've cut with a zigzag pattern and you could put that there to decorate your theatre. You can also use little 
lights in the front, those tiny sparkly lights that run off batteries to make it look like spotlights in your theatre. So I'm not going to construct this now because it uh, will take a little bit of time to glue it all in place. So that would be the decoration for your theatre. But this is your theatre box. And for the box, you're now going to need some puppets. And, of course, what is Paris Cat about? It's about a cat that lives in the back streets of Paris and lives amongst its, the other cats that are all fighting over fish. And then one day, Paris Cat goes off and decides she wants to be something different, something magical, something stronger, another character. And off she goes. And so, and has a, a, an adventure. So you can create the scenes for the story just as you want to, to do it. And there are all sorts of tricks when you're working with cardboard to make shadow effects. And the more you play with it, the more you'll find you can do and do all sorts of extraordinary things. So even while I was making this shadow puppet theater for you, I was finding out all sorts of things. And it also depends on the torch you've got. If you've got a strong torch, that shows a bright light. I'm going to use um, this one here lying on its side, but you could use, I can't put the light on now because it will blind you, but you could use just a little pocket torch. You could even use your torch on an iPhone or a, whatever phone you have. There's a torch function and that would help you make um, shadows. So I'm not going to switch off the lights completely now because then you wouldn't be able to see what we're doing. So. When you do it in darkness, in a room, in the school or at home, you're going to get a much more dramatic effect. But I've got these overhead lights now, and so the effect is not going to be as good as if you have the whole room in darkness. So the first thing to do is we need to create the idea of Paris. And what do we know about Paris? Paris has a very special building. Yes, it's the Eiffel Tower. So, so that we know immediately that we're creating a scene in Paris, we create an Eiffel Tower. Now again, it's just any old cardboard and I've come up close and you'll see, it's just rough. I've actually taken a pencil and I've just stuck holes through it on either side. Again, using that um, sponge so that I don't damage the table and just plink, 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 put holes in your cutout and you get an incredible Eiffel Tower. Have a look at a drawing of an Eiffel Tower and you'll see that it tapers up to a point. So it's long, it's got this archway here and that helps us see it's the Eiffel Tower and there's another big gap and then there are a whole lot of patterns going up. Got that one and then I wanted to make sure that we could see um, that there were um, a lot of fish in Paris that the cats are going to be eating or fighting over. So I used my net, this is that orange net here, you know that's from oranges, and I cut out um, an octopus and there is a fish and there's another fish. Now you're only going to be able to see the effects of this when I put it up against my screen. And just to help me keep it in place, I make these sort of strips of cardboard that have got a bend there so that you can hold it against the screen of the, the puppet theatre. And that's so that you don't see my hand too close up. Now all this will make sense once I show it on the actual screen. So I also cut out some cats, because of course you need cats for the story. And you know when cats fight, they often arch their backs and their tails go up like that. And if you wanted to, you could also put little eyes there because the light of the torch will shine through. So this is a very simple shape for a cat. And in fact, when you have two cats like that, you can actually get them fighting each other. Now I can't find where the other cat is. So that's my cat. Then I've also made the table that the cat is lying under. And here you'll see I've been able to use all these colored pieces of paper and netting. And I've made sure to cut um, holes in the cat and to make whiskers. So again, 
I've got this piece of um, cardboard that I can hold the table up against the uh, screen and the light will shine through. Now it looks like nothing here and it doesn't really matter. I can be very rough. I can put sticky tape. Um, it doesn't have to look at all smart, but once the light throws comes through, it will look very different and very dramatic. So that's that. And then I have also made a cat. Mm, doesn't even look like a cat here, does it? It's, it's just an outline of a cat, again with eyes and whiskers. And I've just pasted on bits and pieces of fabric, fabric that you can see through, lace, and also cellophane. And that cat, because I've put um, pieces onto the legs, I'll be able to make that cat dance. So the magic is not in the puppet like that. You, this doesn't show what the puppet actually will look like on the screen. Once we get it onto the screen, that's when you'll see how wonderful it is. So only by playing with bits and pieces of fabric can you actually see what you can manage to do. And of course, you can even use your own hands as part of the uh, design on the screen or a big pair of scissors to show cutting you can put your scissors cutting up close to the street screen and that will look like the dressmakers in the story of Paris Cat. Right, so we've got all our bits and pieces here and I should now set up the screen. You put it up like that, it has to face you and you must just imagine that we've got all the pieces hanging from it, the decoration that we decided we were going to put onto it, remember? Get the lights on. I don't want to blind you with these lights. This light is very bright. So there we are. Put it. It's on properly. There we are. It's lit up our screen. And as I say, you can use a torch if you want to, just a little torch. So let's begin. Right. Now, here I've got, I didn't show you this building but it's just a cutout. And again, it doesn't matter if there's all sorts of things written across it because once it becomes a shadow, you're not going to see all those things. And here I've made a little stand for it so that I don't have to work with it. I can put it straight against the screen. Let's put it on this side. So we get our shadow there and put it over there. And do you see, maybe it's not showing up all that well. I have to get it a bit closer to you. Um, but there's a, a little symbol there for a fish, because this is a fishmonger. Now, I don't know if you know, if you've been to Paris, the fishmonger in Paris is called a poissonnerie. And the cats, of course, love to be near any place that sells fish. So we've got this little house in the alleyway and we have the Eiffel Tower. Come on Eiffel Tower, get closer. There we are, so we know we're in Paris. Stand up now Eiffel Tower, rest, you know, rest it against the, rest it against the, sh the screen and you'll see the little dots show up there that you've cut out. Right, where are my cats? Hmm, here we are. Now the cats are going to come out and they are looking for fish. Now remember, I've got them on a stick like that, but you're not going to see the stick. We're going to put it close up to the screen and you're just going to see the cats here. All right, here come the cats. sound you like of a cat fighting and of course they're scrapping over the fish that they're finding at the poissonnerie. There we are. Oh we forgot to put our poissonnerie here. Let's get, make a bit more space. Eiffel Tower goes away. Um, we hang out our fish. Oh there's the basket of fish and there's even, if I move my hand back, can you see there's even an octopus. 
Oh, I think maybe I need another little stick to put the op octopus up close next to the screen. But there's an octopus and two fish. So you experiment. And look, it doesn't even matter if your hands show for a while, because that's all part and parcel of doing shadow puppets. Let's take the house away. Now the cats are coming again, and they are coming to fight over the fish. Off they go. Now, in the story of Paris Cat, Paris Cat herself wanted to do something special. She didn't want to live in the alleyways anymore. She wanted to be famous. And off she ran. Outside it was raining and it was miserable. And she didn't have anywhere to go. And so... <coughs> Gosh, I think I've been yowling too much. She found um, a fire escape and it led up to a very old building. And inside she found a table. And under the table were all sorts of amazing pieces of fabric. You can see there's some netting there and colored fabric under that table. And it was all very cozy. And she lay down to sleep and fell fast asleep, not knowing, of course, that she had actually entered into uh, Madame Delphine's special design studio, and that was all the fabric lying under the table. The next morning when she woke up, she heard the snip, snip, snip of scissors. Snip, 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 and there was sewing machine, stitching, stitching, stitching. I don't have a sewing machine puppet, but anyway. And the sewing machines went on and on and on, and the snipping went on and on and on. And Paris Cat said, Phew, I can do that. Anyone knows that cats are good at stitching with their claws. I can make dresses like that. And so, she stayed in the studio, and when everyone went out the next morning, at least that evening, she quietly gathered all the fabric together and started making or designing her own dresses. Snip, snip, snip. And made most magical, amazing outfits. So here we have her in an incredible outfit. And she said, hmm, I'm not going back to Edith Piaf. I will go somewhere else in Paris. Now, I think because it's Paris, we should have, we should make everyone know that it's Paris and we should have the Eiffel Tower back again. There we are, Eiffel Tower. And Cat goes off to find fame and fortune somewhere else. And she finds, in a cafe, she finds someone by the name of Josephine Baker and Josephine Baker was a famous dancer and she had a cheetah who danced with her and the cheetah said to Cat, oh Madam Cat, Madam Kitty, please come and dance with us and Paris Cat got up onto the stage and she started to dance and she danced and twirled and did arabesques and jumped up high. Anyway, that's the story of Paris Cat.